Jesus receives all the honor, the honor of one who is mighty and great. He looked death in the face and didn't flinch. He embraced the company of the lowest. He took on his shoulders the sins of many. He died without a thought for his own welfare. He was buried like a criminal, even though he'd never hurt a soul or said one word that wasn't true. It was our pains he carried, our imperfections, all the things wrong with us. We did our own thing, went our own way. We thought he brought it on himself, that God was punishing him for his own failures. Yet God laid on him everything we've done wrong. There he was, held on the cross with nails in wrists and feet. Before he breathed his last, committed his spirit into the hands of his father, he cried out, my God, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? Pierced, beaten, bruised, insulted, abused, mocked, ripped, torn, rejected, betrayed by his closest friends in exchange for our peace in place of our sin, in exchange for our healing, accused of living a lie when he was the truth. And he offered no words in his own defense. Did anyone really know what was happening? From prison and trial, they led him away to his death. But who among the people realized that he was dying for their sins? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? But this is what God had in mind all along. It was God's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. The plan was that Jesus give himself as an offering for sin. God's plan deeply prospered through his son. And when Jesus saw all that would be accomplished by his anguish, he was pleased. Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. And God so loved every face, every name, every heart. God so loved every life that he gave Jesus his one and only son, to die a death we deserve to die, our mortal life in exchange for his eternal one.